Welcome to week three of AP World. This week we're going to be discussing the Olmec and the Chavin. They are both Mesoamerican societies and uh, it's going to be a nice short week of new content. Keep in mind we do have our first test on Thursday. It's going to include all of week one, week two, and week three information. So this information is on your test, but it will not be the only focus of this week since we do have the first test. So let's start. Now, Meso Mesoamerican societies are going to be located in Mexico, South America, and Central America. Now, there's a couple of them that we're going to be talking about. The Olmecs are going to be a focus. The Chavin are going to be a focus. We're also going to talk about a couple in passing. Now, when we talk about Mesoamerican societies, one of the first questions we ask is how did these people get there? Because remember, we know from week one that East Africa was is the the cradle of life of human civilization. That's where the first Homo sapiens are evolving from. So is that, what we know is that humans are crossing through the Bering Strait uh, from Asia into Alaska, and then they are migrating south, and then eventually we will have them in our Mesoamerican societies. Now, probably this all started around 13,000 BCE. Um, the Bering Strait, there is walk path and very shallow water, so people could make it happen back then. We reach, and we're going to see that Americans reach the southernmost part of South America by 9,500 BCE. So it does take a while, but they are going to reach there. Now, these societies are going to be mostly hunter and gathering societies that eventually are going to evolve into agricultural societies as well. So it's not just a European thing. Agriculture is eventually going to spread around the world, and we're going to see it pop up in groups. So people are figuring it out all around about the same time. Now, the Olmecs are the first civilization we're going to talk about today. They uh, existed or are in uh, power from 1200 to 100 BCE. They're known as the rubber people. Now, the reason why is because they are actually uh, use the rubber trees in South uh, Central America uh, very effectively throughout all of their farming and uses and all that. Uh, they have ceremon uh, ceremonial centers in three different parts of their civilization. And we have the most common relics we have from the civilization are Olmec heads. They are large pieces of rock weighing up to 20 tons that are were travel were moved by rolling and dragging on logs. And it took about a thousand workers per each head. And we have these, and these are one of the few things we have. Clearly they're religious, clearly they're ceremonial. And they have some great importance because it took so much work to do to get them to these places. But we're not really sure too much more on that. Now, when we talk about the society, we have a lot of agriculture. Now, the main staple to their diet is going to be maize. They're herding turkeys and barkless dogs. They're going to eat both of them, as well as it's important to note that in agriculture, they don't have any uh, draft animals. They have no large beasts of burden. They don't have horses. They don't have oxen like the Europeans do. There's no large animals in naturally found in Central America and South America that can be used for agriculture. So we're going to see that their farming is going to be a lot more limited because they don't have the help of these large draft animals. We also have no wheels for quite some time. So a lot of movement is going to be limited because people have to be able to carry whatever they're trying to do. That makes the Olmec heads even more impressive when you think about it. They don't even have any wheels. So very cool. Uh, the Olmec Society is, uh, like I said, we don't really have that much information. Like We don't know exactly why the heads are important. We know they're very limited in some things, but we can make certain types of assumptions. And in world history, sometimes you have to do that. So one of the things that we can assume, it's probably an authoritarian state, which means one person is in charge, they tell everyone else what to do, and that's how things work. There's going to be a large class of conscripted laborers. What that means is they're getting paid to work. Um, these people are getting paid to work um, to pay off debts, to pay off you know, whatever type of punishment they're on, but they are working to pay off debts and they're working for some sort of paycheck or retribution. Uh, they are used to build tombs for rulers, temples, pyramids, and drainage systems. So any of the regular construction that Europeans are using, beasts of burden, oxen, horses, all that for, we're actually using people. 
So keep in mind that's an interesting dynamic that we haven't really explored. Obviously, all around the world at this time, there's not a ton of technology, and humans are the best technology there are. But at this point, in the Americans, the human potential is so much even more crucial because there is no animals. Now, the Olmecs mysteriously decline, much like the Harapin over in uh, South Asia. Now, the ceremonial centers are completely destroyed. No evidence of warfare. We're not sure if it was a revolution or civil war, but the thing we do know is that whatever ended it really tried wiping out the civilization because we really have very few artifacts left of it. So it was a very complete and a very, uh, uh, very complete and very accomplished destruction. Now the next civilization are going to be the Mayans. Now this is a huge Mesoamerican uh, society that was discovered in the 19th century. From 300 BCE to 900 CE, so a huge expanse of time, they are going to develop terrace, terrace farming, which means they're going to cut indents into the hills in order to have more flat farmland. And it's very effective. They're going to grow maize and corn. Uh, they're also going to be start harvesting the first... Uh, chocolate beans and they're going to use this as currency. Now major ceremonial sites are going to be set up. The biggest one is at Tikal and this is going to be essentially the center of the empire. Now when we talk about Mayan warfare it is the purpose of capturing enemy soldiers. That's the reason why they're going to war. And the reason why they wanted to go to war to capture enemy soldiers is because they're killing them. Okay, they're going to enslave them and then eventually sacrifice them for their gods. Now, small kingdoms throughout these, this Mayan civilization engage in constant conflict until they begin to absorb captives. So, some once you are captured, you could choose to die right away, or you could choose to work the land and maybe earn your way out of an um, an immediate death, but not everyone got that choice. And as we continue to grow, we're going to realize this goes back to the lack of beasts of burden in South America and Central America that they need people to do the work, the manual labor, because there is no animal to do it. So slavery is important. Ritual sacrifice is also important. And this is going to be a major reason why the empire develops kind of quickly. Now, the Mayans are most known for their calendar. We all know about the Mayan calendar, how it stopped in 2000, uh, 2012, when we were all supposed to die in 2012. Um, obviously, we're still here in 2014, so we're doing okay. But the reason why the Mayan calendar is so impressive is because of the complex math. They're the first ones to actually invent the use of a zero as a placeholder. Not even the Europeans, not even the Chinese had developed that at this point. That's why they're so far advanced in regards to their calendar. They also had 365 days. They're only 17 seconds off on figuring out how long it takes a year to go around. Um, they predicted it perfectly, and their ritual calendar was every 260 days. So they knew that they were going to be ahead of essentially a year. Now, the management of the calendar leads authority to priesthood. Um, we're going to see that the priests, the, the religious leaders, are going to be the ones managing the calendar and running the calendar and keeping track of all these components, which shows that their priests are very highly educated as well as very, very powerful and very held to high esteem. Now, the timing of auspicious moments for agriculture is important because we're going to see that these are very well marked on the calendars they left behind. Now, the Mayan language and religion is a little more complicated. Ideographs in the syllable alphabet is what we know about their language. Most writings were destroyed by the Spanish conquistadors. Okay, and the ciphering began in the late 1960s. Now, as we are trying to translate these, we're going to find that we can really only have a few stories that we have left. And the Pool Vun is the Mayan creation myth, the explanation of how this civilization or how these people got here and understanding their god. Just like we see the Vedas in, with the Aryans, just like we have the beginning chapters of the Bible, they're trying to explain how they got there. Agricultural cycles maintained in exchange for honors and sacrifices. So if you are a farmer, you are very well respected because of the amount of good you did for the community. And bloodletting was one of their one of the cool things about the Mayans. They love killing people and they love bloodletting. Human sacrifices are a huge component. Um, 
which follow after the removal of fingers and piercing to allow blood to flow. So they'd cut off your hand just to make sure your blood's really going, and then they would kill you, just to make sure they got the full thirst of blood out. Now, one of the most interesting things about the Mayans is we know that they had one of these games. It's a ritual game. It's done in a religious sense. Uh, what would happen, they would force the highly ranking captives or prisoners of war to be contestants in this game. So it shows that not everyone can do it, but only hot, important people who are you know, captured. And what happens is if you lose the game, you're executed. So talk about playing for your life. Okay, and we're going to see that we're going to use bloodletting rituals as well throughout the game. So this is like, we think American football is bad. It's got nothing on this. Now, the city of Tijuacan is uh, highlands of Mexico. It's a lake in an area of high of eleva elevation. Now, this village expands to a large agricultural city. It's an important uh, ceremonial center, has extensive trade networks. So we're going to see that they are trading amongst other civilizations. However, it begins to decline in 650 CE and eventually will become burned down. Now, that's the end of the Mayans. Let's talk about the Adean societies. Now, the Adean societies are going to be located in South America in the Andes Mountains. Andean, Andes Mountains. Now, the migration from South America uh, started occurring in 12,000 BCE. Climate improved. So it was more tempting for people to live there and more suitable for people to live there. Largely independent from Meso Mesoamerica. We're going to see that in the South American civilizations are still going to thrive and be successful. There's going to be a little bit of contact between those in Mesoamerican and in South America, but not a ton of contact. It is very highly individualized due to the geography. Even all of the civilizations we're going to talk about today, we're going to see that they're still very independent because the terrain is so challenging. One of the most important things about the Chavin is their cult, okay? They start this new religion in Central Andes Mountains between 900 and 300 BCE. Little is known about this religion. However, we have stone carvings, and we're going to see that it is worshipping maize, actually, because it was such an important crop. Now, during this era, we see the Adean society become increasingly more and more complex. We're going to see a lot more uh, social structures. We're going to see a lot more class complications as well. What we really need to know is the Shavian cult is the maze. Worshipping maze adds to more complex society. Now, the Mochica state is in the valley of the Mooch River. It is dominates, dominated northern Peru from 300 to 700 CE. Now, paintings do survive. One of the many states in the region, none were able to consolidate into an empire. So it's not an empire, but we're going to see that they're pretty effective. But we don't have that much information about these civilizations because they don't have written records. We don't see any written records about these civilizations until the Spanish bring it over. And then they start recording the histories of different civilizations once they have a language to write. And that's a huge disadvantage to our understanding about Mesoamerica and South America is because there is no written language. They have their verbal prayers. They have their different types of other components, the paintings and all that stuff, and their sculptures. But we don't have that much written documents, so we don't really know that much information about them. Now, this is a very quick oversight of these uh, two types of civilizations in, in the Americas. Please keep in mind that on your exam you're going to only see maybe one or two questions about this and you're going to see a majority of the last two weeks of information. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you prepare and plan well to do well on your test on Thursday. Have a great week guys. Bye.